Good evening. This is Michael Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. I um, want to do a quick uh, look at what we're expecting coming up this next week. Um, I'm also trying a screen recorder that my son uses called Open Broadcaster. So we'll see how well this works using his microphone and everything. So uh, hopefully this comes through. It's my first time doing a video with this. So hopefully it all works out well. So um, with that, we want to get into things here. Um, first, we'll take a look here at at madcoweather.com uh, be sure that you go if you like these videos um, and you want to get them straight to your emails you want to get the forecast straight to your emails you want to get storm alerts straight to your emails be sure to go to madcoweather.com uh, that's madcoweather.com and click over here on the right side and click the support us tab and down here you can subscribe or you can do one-time donations or you can do annual donations <clears throat> Again, I've not set the uh, prices yet, so um, it's kind of, if you want to become a subscriber, you can kind of set your own price. I just ask that you, if you're going to subscribe, please do as much as you can to help support us, help help get this going better. Uh, what I would love is eventually to have, you know, two or three, at least two of us, Kristen, we need to get Kristen on board, and but uh, two or three of us to where we can cover you 24-7. Uh, better than what just one person can do but you know that's going to take some money also so at any rate just uh, help us get better help us keep this going and um, I also want to thank uh, before we get into this I want to thank our sponsors Joy Mitchell's Independent Sensi Consultant um, that's my lovely wife um, Anderson Symphony Orchestra Madison County Federal Credit Union and if it'll scroll down uh, Community Hospital of Anderson. I uh, thank those uh, sponsors all for helping us keep going, and I thank every one of you who have donated or who have uh, become subscribers yourself to help us keep going. So with that said, let's get on into what we're looking for in this upcoming week. Um, you know, see the seven-day forecast on here. I'll do an enlarged version of it here later on, but uh, this is already posted to the website, and it always goes on the website first. So, as you take a look at the seven day, you know, some of us picked up some rain last night. Uh, here in North Anderson, we only got three hundredths of an inch of rain over the course of about 45 minutes. So, it was just enough to wet things, and that was about it. Northwestern Madison County, up around Elwood, maybe picked up a tenth or so. But most of us didn't pick up very much. Alexandria, uh, Summitville, I uh, don't think they got anything last night, but they maybe got some the night before last. So, Hopefully all of us got a little bit of rain, but as a whole, we're in a pretty dry pattern. And it looks like that pattern is going to continue over the next, you know, at least seven, maybe ten days. So um, I'm going to take a look here at the um, mid-level water vapor loop from College of DuPage Next Lab. It's a outstanding free site that uh, any of you can access. Uh, you can see over here, we've got this big ridge out here to the west, and you got a trough digging into the northeast. So the northeast is actually quite cool, as hot as it is in the plains. And we're kind of seasonably hot. You know, it's hotter than average, but you know, nothing that we wouldn't expect this time of year on occasion. So I think today we got up to 91 here at my location. Most of us hit 90 degrees today. Had a heat index in the upper 90s. So it was it was muggy, but it was a great pool day. Or and just a sitting in the shade day and um, this big ridge out here is going to continue to supply heat to the western probably two-thirds of the nation while the northeast continues to be cold or cool for this time of year with the influence of air being drawn down from Canada northern Canada into the northeast by this big trough that's a that's a pattern that we may see modify a little bit over the and next weekend as we'll have a front come through that'll allow us to start to access a little bit more of this cooler air but not a lot we're still going to be right on the periphery and i don't really think we're going to get as cool as some of the modeling thinks we are but um well, in fact let's take a look here real quick let's go to weathermodels.com take a look first at the european i mean you can see that friday it's got us at 77 then it comes back to around 80 and it keeps us pretty cool from say friday through tuesday i think it's a little too cool but yeah it's kind of got the idea you can tell where the front is it's seeing the heat you know the rest or the beginning part of this week whereas you take a look at the gfs and it's one of the 
give us 73 on Friday and 69 on Saturday and lower 70s, you know, much of next weekend. I, I th really think that's really too cool. That that trough to the northeast is really going to have to retrograde a lot. The only way that's going to happen is if that big ridge out west gives way and you know a ton. And I just don't think it's going to do that. So I think we're my forecast still has us hanging around 80 degrees on the coolest days and then getting back to the lower 80s but know that we could end up being a couple of degrees cooler if that ridge is a little bit weaker and allows that trough to dig in more we could be a little cooler but if that ridge doesn't weaken as much we could be warmer so uh, my forecast is kind of split that difference and we're going to take a look into the longer range here a little bit and I'll do a more of a video on long range in the middle of the week, but just I always like to take a look up in the Bering Sea and again this right here Kind of represents if you can see the arrow on this kind of represents somewhat where we are and this Would indicate that maybe three weeks out maybe the middle of November or middle. Yeah, November I'm kind of jumping the gun there middle of August uh, there could be a quite a substantial trough out west and That would be supplying some decent warmth into our area with another trough up northeast and uh, we'll see how this plays out because this isn't always a one-to-one -one relationship but it does give you an idea that there could be some storminess and maybe some heat followed by a cool shot in the middle of uh, august as well so we'll see how it all plays out as a whole i think august is going to be warmer than average uh, it's going to be predominantly warm i think but we are there are a couple of cool shots uh, in you know as risk in that time frame we take a look at precipitation coming up this week. I've got, this is at PivotalWeather.com. And I've got up the Canadian model. I think it's it's the most aggressive with precipitation. And that's why I'm going to show it to you. Because this is kind of looking at maybe our wettest case scenario. And I, so let's take a look here at what it's got. And you know, as we're getting into you know Tuesday, really you know all the... All of the models have activity staying off to our northeast following the southern part of that trough that's uh, to the northeast. Uh, so there's not really any real argument about that. Here we are getting into Thursday. Uh, this is probably our best chance of rainfall over the next seven days. Sunday is looking a little questionable. Uh, this may be our best chance. This would be at 8 a.m. on, uh, on s yeah, I keep looking at the wrong date there, on Thursday. And now uh, you can see it's got some... Uh, Pretty decent activity moving in to northwestern Indiana but then you go to by afternoon it's virtually gone and by evening the front's pressing off to our south and you know Madison County's right in there so you know it's possible it could jump over us timing's going to be everything with with Thursday we needed to time out right in order to get some decent rain and it could be one of those scenarios again though where it ends up finding a way to hop us so we'll, we'll kind of dial that in as we get later into the week but uh, for now, that's probably the most aggressive. I think the GFS has us picking up, you know, uh, let's, take, let's go back here and look here real quick. I hate to look at the models too much. The GFS actually, with the 18Z, has become more aggressive, giving us about a half inch of rain. So I would consider that, you know, I mean, if we get lucky, we'll get a half inch of rain. I think, or realistically, we're looking at two to three tenths, maybe. So we get on into, uh, you know, Friday, it's pretty dry as, you know, surface high builds in and pushes most of the activity to our southwest. We're getting on into early, this is early Sunday, and you can see there's some, so ugh, I can't speak tonight, some substantial rain out in Illinois. And, you know, the Canadian model has given us a decent chance at some rain during the day Sunday. Not a ton, but at least some. So again, this is kind of the most aggressive of the models. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, GFS. It you know gives us about another half inch on Sunday. So really, GFS has become the most aggressive. The 18Z just cranked out right as I was starting this video, so that's why it didn't really go by yet. But you can also see how cold the GFS gets, and I don't think that's right, and that's why I think it's overdoing the rainfall amounts. So that's a, just a very quick overview of what we're expecting this coming week. I mean, you know, maybe a little bit of rain on Thursday, maybe some rain on Sunday. But as a whole, uh, anything between now and Thursday, if anything pops up, it's going to be very isolated. And you're going to be very lucky if you get some rain. 
Uh, you wouldn't have thought two weeks ago we'd be thinking we were getting lucky getting some rain. I'm going to take one more uh, look at one more thing here. Um, our friends at BAMweather.com, BAMWX.com, they have this outstanding app called Weather Porthole. It's available online and on your phone. It's got so many features, I'm not going to go through them all. But one of the features, and I do have permission to use these on occasion, so um, one of the features they have is on their live radar. They've got these, these layers where you can get observed rainfall, observed snowfall, severe weather outlook, so many things that you can get on this. This is the 24-hour observed rainfall, and you can see just how you had heavier rain back here, you know, north of Frankfurt, west of Kokomo. They picked up one to two inches of rain, but by the time it was getting into Tipton County, it was fading. You know, you got Elwood picked up, that says about, you know, 0.15 or so. The heaviest in the county, according to this, was right out on the county line around a half inch. My location in North Anderson, the porthole has me picking up four hundredths of an inch. I actually picked up three hundredths of an inch, so that's pretty daggone accurate, especially for such a light event. But you can see that how it just it came in and it just faded out as it crossed over Madison County, and then when it got into the northeastern Henry County, it picked back up again. So that's kind of been our fortunes of late. So I just wanted to show you that so you kind of visualize how the rainfall occurred last night. So we'll take one more, we'll take the tour back here. We'll take a look at the actual and enlarged seven day forecast. Again, we're looking for really very, very tiny rain chances through Wednesday and um, highs in the upper 80s to lower 90s. My forecast is warmer than most of the data out there. Uh, as I'm looking at what the the ridge of high pressure to our west is doing, I think it's going to be a little bit stronger than modeled. So I'm forecasting a little warmer. Um, we'll, so we'll be in the upper 80s, lower 90s through Thursday. Cold front comes through on Thursday. Hopefully we can get some rain Friday, Saturday. You know, I, my forecast again is warmer than what's what the data has. I'm, I'm around 80 to the lower 80s, lows in the upper 50s. Um, Again, it's possible, again, if the ridge is stronger, we would be warmer. If it's weaker, we would be cooler. So that just remains to be seen. Uh, Sunday, right now, I'm going with, you know, isolated storm chances. Actually, I see I've messed my graphic up on Sunday, so I'll have to fix that. But at any rate, uh, we'll be at isolated storm chances on Sunday, mainly, you know, early. But uh, that, that'll need fine-tuned as well. And again, highs probably low to maybe mid-80s on Sunday. So that's a look at the seven-day forecast. That's a look at what we're expecting coming up over the next week. Um, I hope you find these videos helpful. I'll keep getting better as, at them as I do them. Uh, hopefully the next one I will actually be able to speak. Uh, in the meantime, this is Micah Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. I thank every single one of you. I especially thank those of you who are uh, helping us keep going financially and help us uh, get get better through your financial help so again madcoweather.com you could donate or subscribe there i think i'm going to be adding cash app here soon and maybe zelle so uh, i'll add some other ways for you to be able to donate to us as well so with all that said thank you all of you and thank you to our sponsors and our subscribers this is micah mitchell with madison county weather updates have a great week